Alright guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be carrying on with our platformer and we're going to be looking at how to add a couple of enemy characters into the game. Uh, we're going to style them kind of like the Goombas from Mario. They're just going to walk left and right, they're going to be super simple, um, and when they hit a wall they'll change direction and walk the other way. Uh, when you jump on top of them you'll be able to bounce off of them and that'll kill the enemy, and if you walk into the enemy though, uh, like head on, you'll, you'll die and that'll be game over. Please bear in mind that if this is the first video of mine you're seeing, um, this tutorial carries on from a series of tutorials on making a platform game, and you should really start with those and understand the code that's involved with them before trying to understand what I'm doing here. That said, this tutorial should be fairly easy to follow and understand if you do have a basic grasp of how to do collisions and basic platform physics in GameMaker code. So let me walk you through what's changed since our previous tutorial. As you can remember, in the last tutorial we added these power-ups into the game, and since then all I've done is I've changed the layout of this room a little bit. I've created a new uh, new sprite, SPR underscore enemy, and a new object, OBJ underscore enemy, which is going to be our enemy object, and just dotted a couple of them in the room. They don't actually have any code yet. We're going to be keeping this tutorial super simple, and we're going to be doing all of the new code is going to be inside our enemy object. So the first thing we need to do on our enemy object, as usual, is just establish some basic variables. So go ahead and add the create event, drag in a code action, I'll just comment this as initialize variables, and set dir equal to minus one, semicolon. Um, dir is going to be short for direction. And basically when it's minus one it's going to mean we're moving to the left and when it's one we're going to be moving to the right. You'll see how that works when we come to the step event but for now just remember that dir represents our horizontal direction at any point in time. Uh, the next variable, in fact the next four variables should be quite familiar if you've already watched uh, the first platform tutorial. It's just going to be the same sort of movement variables we had for our player object. So we're going to start with move speed equals 3, which is going to represent our maximum horizontal movement speed. Grav equals 0.2, which is going to equal our um, the amount of gravity added to our object per frame. And HSP equals 0, and VSP equals 0, which are going to be the variables that contain our current horizontal speed and current vertical speed, respectively. And that's all you need for variables. So with those variables out of the way, let's take a look at some of the actual code. So go into your events and add the step event this time. Drag in an execute code action. And the first thing we're going to do is just set up um, our movement. So I'm going to set HSP to equal DIR times move speed. And now you can see how the direction variable works. Because as you can remember, our move speed is 3. And when DIR is minus 1, our HSP on this line of code is going to equal minus 3, meaning we're moving 3 pixels a frame to the left. And when DIR is positive 1, it's going to be 1 times 3, which is 3, 3 pixels to the right. Um, and then for vertical speed, all we need to do is apply our gravity, so I'm just going to set VSP plus equals grav on any particular frame, because VSP will always be reset to 0 when we hit the floor anyway. So we'll just keep adding gravity to it until we get there, meaning it like accelerates over time. Uh, now the next thing we'll want to do is add in our basic collision code, and now we've already written it, so I may as well just go into our player object, into our step event, and if you can remember our, our collision code from before, it's horizontal collision, vertical collision lines, we can literally just grab this entire chunk of code, copy it, go into our enemy object again, and just paste it in there. It'll work just the same because we've used the same variables VSP and HSP and yeah it'll work exactly the same way. The only difference uh, there's going to be with our enemy object is when we hit a wall instead of just setting our speed to zero we want to change direction so that we start walking the other way. So after all of this all you need to do is come down here and type dir times equals minus one. So if we're about to hit a wall, do all of the wall collision stuff and times our direction by minus one. So if it's minus one, it'll become one. If it's one, it'll become minus one. And really, that's all there is to it. And now it'll walk around fine, and we should be able to test that now. If I go, okay, okay, run the game. 
yeah, as you can see, I nearly fell from the sky there as well. And that guy walked along here for a little bit, fell down here, and now they're walking backwards and forwards in this little bit. They're behaving pretty much how a standard Goomba does from, like, uh, a Mario game. So now the last thing we need to do is make it so our enemy objects respond to our player, so that our player can jump on them, or walk into them and lose, and all that sort of stuff. So if we open up our... well, no, don't open up the player object, sorry. Open up our enemy object again, go back into the step event. As I said, we're doing everything inside of our enemy object. Uh, we're going to just do a, another block of code quite similar to our collision code already. We're going to call this one enemy collision. So, with this one we're going to say if place meeting uh, x, y, obj underscore player, close those brackets, open a new pair of semi brackets, so if we collide with the player, it's pretty simple enough. The next line of code is going to be if obj underscore player dot y less than y minus 16. Now that basically will check to see if we're if we're colliding with the player already, are we colliding from the top? So it's going to compare our current y coordinate minus 16, so about halfway up our uh, our enemy object um, to the y coordinate of our player. So it's basically going to say is is the player 16 pixels above us? assuming that the origin of the player object and the enemy object are the same. They're both in the center of the object at the moment. So is 16 pixels above the enemy is the player there when they're colliding, which means you know you, you jumped on them or you, you've landed from above, you've collided with the top half of the object. If so, we're going to say with obj underscore player and this is in order to do some code with the player object since we're currently inside the enemy object and we want the player to like do a bounce and jump. So I'm going to say with obj underscore player vsp equals minus jump speed semicolon which is exactly the same as you know when we jump that's what we do isn't it we set our vertical speed to be our minus jump speed so that will cause the player to bounce whenever he lands on the top half of the player uh, top half of the enemy, sorry. And then all we need to do is actually kill off the, the enemy itself because we've jumped on it, so we're just going to say instance destroy. You might want to do something fancier than instance destroy, you might have it play an animation or swap to another object that creates some particle effects or something like that. But for now we're just keeping this simple and we're just going to kill off the object. So you can see where to do the code and you get the idea. Um, otherwise though, else equals and now this else here means if this condition uh, is not true then we're gonna do this stuff inside the else brackets instead so if that's true do all of this stuff otherwise do this stuff so basically otherwise if we're with we're here that means we've collided with the player but we haven't collided from the top that means we're just walking into it or whatever or it's, it's his in a different way so in that case we've lost now, if you want to do something fancy here as well, you could do all kinds of things like reducing your lives, playing a death animation and so on, but we're just going to keep it absolutely bare bones simple and just say game restart, open close bracket, which will just restart the game entirely. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it, so about 40 lines of code in there. So I'm going to close that now, I'm going to run the game. So we have our enemy objects here, so if I jump on this one, you can see I bounce off of it, even if I fall onto it there. If I restart the game and walk into it, you can see I lose and I restart the game. Mm. Mm. But I can also jump on them and kill them. So there you have it, that's how to implement basic Goomba style enemies into your platform game. Hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll catch you next time.